Princella. Hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Corp Entertainment. I am Amora, your host, and today we have a wonderful artist on the line today. She is a medical student in Russia, and she's originally from Ghana. Her name is Priscilla Serafina. Hi, welcome with us today, Priscina, Priscilla. Oh wait, let me try that again. Welcome, <laughs> w- welcome to the podcast today, Priscilla. Thank you, Amora. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be interviewed by you. Oh, that's so nice to say. I was on your Instagram and the way that I found you was I you popped up in my uh my recommended, like, and I was just like, ooh, look at these pictures, like paintings or of black, beautiful women. Just they look very peaceful and elegant and the colors are very neutral i was like whoever drew this picture know how to make me look good (laughs) and so i was just like this is so pretty but you don't really see a lot of um art i think what like black art so much like you're starting to see it a lot more now but it's just i've seen a lot of like what is it it's a digital art right it's like is there a yeah digital art yeah so digital painting so yeah, digital paintings. How did you get into digital paintings? Like, where did you learn the skill to be so good? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I taught myself oh. out of boredom and quarantine. <laughs> yeah, so I basically started after um, uh, one of my stressful exam periods. Mm-hmm. That was like from them so I needed something that would like help me relax and then calm down and because studying for that exam was really hell and Mm. by God's grace I passed excellently Mm -hmm. so I needed to like calm down so I found uh, myself okay I studied with my iPad and somewhere along the line, I downloaded Procreate. It was by accident. And just, playing so, around, just playing around with it. Yeah, I decided that I'm not just going to waste my... Because, you know, Procreate costs like $10 or so. I didn't want to what? waste my $10. Yeah, so I girl. kind of forced myself to like try to play around with it. And then I saw a Pinterest tutorial on how to make these digital paintings. And I was like, hmm... I can also do that. So I started practicing, practicing, and yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. How long did it take you to get that good? Okay. It didn't take me that long because I, I'm i an artist. Like, I used to draw on paper, but, like, I stopped for a while because school. So let's say a month. I don't I don't think it really even took up to a month because I already had some skill with drawing. So. It didn't take me so long. I was another thing was I was drawing every single day. Yeah. Like every yeah. because I really love how it came out. Doing that every single day, it's like a little bit at a time. Especially if you see it as a a way to relax. That is like easy practice. Mm-hmm. It's not something that's forced. It's like yeah. especially like with studying at in a medical school, like like I, I can imagine how stressful that would be. Does your classmates know that you're an mm-hmm. artist as well too? Is that something that people know you for in addition to medicine? No, no one actually knows me as it depends. Most people know me. Okay, from high school, most people know me as a poet, <laughs> and people from university know me as a dancer. Really, so this art part was, yeah, yeah. I dance at church. <laughs> oh wow! So this, this part, yeah, this part was kind of not known to many people. I mean, a few of my friends in high school knew that I could draw, but they didn't really, yeah, pay attention to that side of me. They knew me as a poet. So I didn't also really want to expose that part of me because I was shy. I didn't know if I didn't know how people would respond to it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. How did you get out of your shyness though and kind of put it on Instagram? Because you have like over 14,000 followers on Instagram. That is not a small number. <laughs> so what kind of gave you courage to start putting your stuff out there? 
uh, a friend actually snapped me out of it. She said, my work is good. I need to get more people seeing my work. So I just created the account just to store like for myself, actually. I did it for myself initially, but like other people found my page. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of us found your page because it's so pretty. <laughs> it's like. I saw it and I was like, oh, this is, this is cute. Like, I want to look like the model that you drew. It's, are, those, are those real women or are those women that are from the imagination that you just draw? Uh, so I draw based on references. Mm-hmm. So I see some qualities that I like in different pictures and I try to merge them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes to I get from my head the inspiration, but I always need a reference. I feel like so that it looks human. I don't want them to look like caricatures or something. Mm. I always love my paintings to look as close to life as possible so that you can relate to it. Yeah. So now this is like a little side business for you while you go to school. Mm -hmm. I never expected anything like this. (laughs) I really never did. I started out um, drawing for myself as a way to get rid of my stress from like the exam I told you about. Mm-hmm. And then later on, people were like, oh, this is so nice. Can you do this for me? Oh, this is so nice. I want a picture of me. And then it, it became into an art business that way. And then more people came and they were like, oh, I need a drawing for my business. Could Ooh. you like do something? Yeah, and it keeps going up and up. Now I have brands asking me to do some illustrations for them. And, like, that is really mind-blowing. I never knew, like, all these opportunities existed. Wow. So I'm really, really grateful. What would you tell someone who, like, there are people, like my sister, for example, she wants to be an artist too. And so she does a little bit of art and she does Instagram Live. So for someone that's oh. like you who was shy and you kind of stumbled upon this opportunity to make money, just doing something that you'd like to do and doing something that's relaxing, drawing and creating art. What are some things that you learned that you didn't expect to learn, but that actually benefited you a lot in getting the attention of people? So I know one of them is just putting your stuff out there, but is there anything else that you think really mm-hmm. contributed to people like trusting you to, to, to work with you? Mm-hmm. That's a really great question. One thing I would say I really had to learn was um, uh, saying not saying yes to every offer that comes my way. I had to like pick out the ones that aligned with like the goals that I had for my business mm. and trying to not lose myself in the process. Because you know you can get carried away with the money and like everything mm-hmm. and every offer that mm-hmm. comes with this opportunity but I had to learn that I need to take care of myself I need to stick to my goals I need to basically um not lose myself or some if you understand what I mean by that like stay true to myself yeah I hope that answers the question Yeah, it it does help answer the question. But how do you know what your like, how did you come up with like, the idea of what the goal is for your company or for your brand, since you didn't start off thinking like, oh, I want to have a business in art. Like, how did you come up with like, what is important to your business? Where do the ideas come from? To be honest, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still really learning about it. But like one thing that I really wanted to um, to stick with my company was representation. Like you said, there's Mm -hmm. not a lot of um, black skin art represented and all of that. So I needed to um, step in that way. And also, there isn't really art that like most of the time when you see black art okay from my side of the country when you see black art it's it depicts women in this um suffering carrying the whole world on her shoulders kind of image like yeah I think like like black women are just so (laughs) always tired and worn out and just heavy I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just, I did, I think that's also what caught me to your art too, is it show black women being vulnerable, gentle, soft, wind, Mm -hmm. like just 
delicate. And I don't see a lot of that. And that's what also connected me to your art too, is just seeing like, like black women, you know, a delicate flower. You have to be gentle with her. Not so much like yeah, I'm a yeah. strong black woman. All. Cause you know, we are that too, <laughs> but it's also no one ever sees that vulnerable, gentle. She's a pillow. She's a, a mm-hmm. flower. You can break a flower if you're too rough <laughs> type of person. So yeah. that's, I, that's what I liked. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was very important for me. So, but also like for personal illustrations, just to overall make the client happy. Like, I know people like to see digital versions of themselves. So, (laughs) yeah. This is another question from the previous interviewee that I interviewed. Uh, He is an actor and he used to be in the military for 21 years, but now he's a full time actor. And this is what his question is for you. His name is Aaron Pina, and this is what his question is. If you could work at any place in the world, and it doesn't have to be a nine to five job, but just anywhere ever in the world, what kind of company would it be if there were no boundaries? That is, it's a tough question. Does it have to be a company? Does it you really can, have to be a you company? You can twist the answer if that's what, if that's how you're just like, that is implied in me. I don't want to work for no company. So, I mean, it's just up to you. And one thing about me is I love, I would love to travel. Ooh. So hopefully anything that wouldn't restrict me from traveling a lot. And caring about people and their mental well-being their mm. how they are feeling and all that. so my job would have to center around that mm-hmm. like my art for instance empowering women mm-hmm. making them feel special making them feel like they can mm-hmm. they're capable they're loved all, all around that and I know for a certain that being an a freelance illustrator mm-hmm. would be able to give me all of these benefits so I think maybe being a freelancer is that job <laughs> so you would you would rather just be remote and not be stuck to a single company yeah yeah for me i feel like yeah <laughs> so do you think you would like to continue working for yourself if you could just have it your way is it continue working for yourself or um or would you or if there was a company that allowed you to be remote you would do that I would I would love to work for a company if they're going to give me all those privileges. Why not? <laughs> and if they're paying well, <laughs> why not? So, yeah. I wonder how you can incorporate art into medical. Medicine. That's really a tough question that I'm still asking myself and praying about because I really don't know. I really honestly don't know how. But let's see. There's some way I'm how sure. The story- you know, maybe the, the technology that is going to help you do that is still being built today. Exactly. Or maybe all the knowledge from here is going to help shape my art. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like a traveling doctor and artist. It's like, it is. like <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to imagine what that would look like. Um mm-hmm. What type of uh, medical are you doing? So are you doing like surgeon, like a surgeon or what type of medicine? Okay, so we haven't yet um, specialized in, like we haven't yet broken into specialties yet. I'm still doing general medicine. So when I graduate, I'm going to be a general practitioner and so, mm-hmm. I, or therapist. Mm-hmm. So I have to decide afterwards, like after I get into practice and like, in the hospitals and I'm working mm. in various fields to help figure out which one I want. But I know for sure I don't want to be a surgeon. <laughs> because, I do not want to be a surgeon. But if you're, okay, so then if you're not a surgeon, is it the type of work that you could theoretically do remotely? Mm, I, don't know. I guess like being a family doctor, family medicine, mm-hmm. you only work certain hours and then you have the rest of the night or afternoon to yourself or you can be uh a, a, this okay in the uk and in ghana there's this you can be a locum doctor like you decide what hours you want to mm-hmm. work and then you have the rest of the day to yourself mm-hmm. so maybe something like that could help. 
all work out. Mm. But then usually those doctors are like therapists. Mm, like mm. you go for consultation and stuff like that with them. So yeah. But they still have to specialize. They still have to specialize in maybe gastro like about your um stomach. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, you have to maybe like neurology you specialize in maybe um heart problems or lung problems, pulmonologists, stuff like that. Pediatrics. Okay. Obstetrics. Yeah, because I was thinking, I was like, I wonder if there's a way, because you know what COVID happened right now, a lot of doctors are working remotely, so, you know, they don't really have to be in the office, but they still do be in the office for when you, when they need to, like, physically see you. So I was just trying. Yeah, the thing about medicine is, yeah, the thing about medicine is you need to also see your patients to, like, assess them physically, Mm. not only, patients be lying. Oh, yeah. You need to see. (laughs) 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 Patients be lying. (laughs) they lie so you have to assess them like check their skin temperature blood pressure you check you palpate auscultate everything you have to do physically okay that makes that makes sense now what is a question that's very creative that you might think is good to ask the next interviewee (laughs) <laughs> it, it could it can even be you know i had a um uh an analyst on my on my show too and so they they had like a very technical mindset as well so you can ask something mm-hmm. from like a medical i mean not asking somebody's medical information or medical whatever but you can think like a doctor or you can think like an artist when you ask your question it doesn't have to be something simple but just something creative that maybe no one would think to ask. Hmm. Hmm. I need time to think for this one. Cause we have time. I think a lot and I over. And that's going to make the good question. <laughs> we do? <laughs> yeah, we have a little bit of time. Dee, dee. We are thinking. Anything at all. Like, yeah, anything, anything at, all. at all. Because this is what's going to make the show fun is like asking random questions from previous interviewees to to next interviewees. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I have one. <laughs> yes. Please. Question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is one thing that they would consider their true gifts or talent that they have to offer to the world? Okay, that's a good question. Now, you know, (laughs) the thing with that is that a lot of people on the show might say exactly what they're on interviewing for. They'll say, like, if it's you, you'll say, it's art or medicine. So I imagine that they might say um, the, the career that they're going after. But I might be surprised because they might say something that they never mentioned in the interview. Mm-hmm. Because it could be something completely off. They might talk about a, a, a particular way that they process emotions or it could be something that like how they think about things, how they question things. And that has nothing to do with like their particular passion and whatever art they're doing, but it's about who they are as a person. Mm-hmm. So exactly. Yeah. Mm. So then maybe to make it to make it interesting, you don't you have to exclude like whatever they're on the show for. <laughs> what? Yeah. But, okay, so I so then so the question would then become what what are you passionate about outside of what you're doing? And what is it? Okay, so let it be um I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, just, this is hard. <laughs> okay. uh, so maybe we can instead say, mm, these are too heavy. And, and, I and, know, and, I think it's fun. <laughs> like, like something like, what What would you hmm. do? Like, what? <laughs> what would you do if you couldn't be the the thing that you're currently going for that's close that's close Mm. and would still bring you fulfillment oh and what would still bring you fulfillment Mm -hmm. Mm. 
That is so hard. What'd you? Think? I like that question. It's hard. I like that question because <laughs> it's like, yeah, singing would just. It's like, okay, so what else would you do, and that would still bring you fulfillment? Because now they might actually. Like if you lost your voice. Ooh. Yeah. If and you lost your voice, what else could you do that would still bring you fulfillment? Ooh. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Princella. I can't wait to hear. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't wait to hear answers. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I always like post the answers. Like I ask them and then um mm-hmm. I will uh share it and they and they will answer it as well too. But um that is interesting. Even I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> I don't even know the answer. <laughs> But the answer's not for me. <laughs> so we're going to uh, ask the next person. <laughs> yeah, right. Princella, mm-hmm. thank you so much for going on the show today, coming on the show and talking to us. It was so fun to have you on. Awesome to hear your perspective. Thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. And can you tell Thank the- you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Girl, you are just, you are awesome and very smart and intelligent and creative. Now, how can we support you? I mean, I know how I can support you, but how can you tell the audience how to support you while who's listening in who wants to buy some beautiful, elegant designs, elegant art? <laughs> okay, first they can follow me on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> um, I have links there. <laughs> yeah, I have my links there. They can buy my art from my website. Uh, it's www.artbyprincella.com. And that would really mean a lot to me if I see your art in your homes and you taking pictures and showing me how you framed them. It would re- it would really mean so much to me. So, yeah, oh my buy God. my art. <laughs> yes, thank you so yeah. much. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Same to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.